Kathy and Elliot Lewis on stage. Kathy Lewis, Elliot Lewis, two of the most distinguished names in radio, appearing each week in their own theater, starring in a repertory of transcribed stories of their own and your choosing. Radio's foremost players in radio's foremost plays. Ladies and gentlemen, Elliot Lewis. Good evening. May I present my wife, Kathy? Good evening. We're privileged tonight to welcome a writer new to our on-stage series. His name is Arthur Ross. His credits are formidable, and I'm sure that his name is familiar to many of you listening. Arthur very successfully, we feel, accomplished the nearly impossible. He wrote a play about three people that has a new premise. The play is called, And a Fond Farewell. And we're going to do it right now. I'm Lisa Jensen, and if I told you my husband was probably the most attractive professor at Wilton University, you would raise an eyebrow. Either you would raise it out of doubt or just jealousy. I consider myself quite a lucky woman. Not that Robert doesn't look at other women. He'd have to, just to keep from tripping over them when they throw themselves at his feet. Isn't Lisa beautiful? If I told you my wife was probably the most beautiful professor's wife at Wilton University, you would raise an eyebrow. Either you would raise it out of doubt or, or just plain jealousy, especially during the summer. Why? Well, don't you know? Didn't you ever notice what summer dresses can do for a woman? They make the plain woman attractive, the attractive woman pretty, the pretty woman beautiful, and the beautiful... Ah, that's Lisa. Move over. Let me sit on the edge. I always thought a man's patio was his castle. Lying in the sun is everybody's castle. Move over. Mm. Your voice has that frightening note of a woman who has just proven her husband wrong. Doesn't happen every day, at least not to me. Not with a husband who's a professor and knows everything. Who thinks he knows everything. If I knew everything, you wouldn't stay married to me for three minutes. You mean happiness in our 20 years of marriage has increased as our intelligence diminished? Oh, dear. I don't know much about inverse ratios. That belongs to the mathematics department, and I'm only a drama professor. Since when have you demoted yourself from dean of the drama school to professor? Since you walked out with that album of photographs, I was absolutely positive had been destroyed at least 15 years ago. Wait till you see some of them. Oh, wait, wait, just, just a minute. Don't flip through them so fast. Ah, you look wonderful in that one. I look awful. These days, college girls are much more relaxed. Who's that? You, darling. At our wedding reception. Oh. <laughs> That's funny how 20 years can obscure one's memory. I didn't remember that picture being taken. You didn't even remember it was taken at the moment it was taken. Champagne, you know. Mm, yes. Champagne. Mm. Oh, and there we are. The happy trio. Oh? What's wrong? You and I look happy. We were the bridegroom and bride, but I don't think Eric looks particularly pleased. He doesn't. Well, I mean, he was in love with me, wasn't he? Well, he was. He was. And I won you away. I stole your heart from under his very eyes. I don't know what's so funny. Poor Eric left town two days later. Hasn't been back since. Poor Eric? Yes, poor Eric. Poor indeed. One of the richest actors and directors on Broadway today, surrounded by luxury and famous people and trips abroad every year. I hardly think you can call him poor Eric. You needn't get angry about it. No, I wasn't angry, honest. But you are. Now, come back here, honey. Uh, it's comfortable right here, thank you. The sun's too warm. Would Eric have left as he did? Would he go off like that if he hadn't been miserable? 
Well, I'd say he didn't exactly go off clicking his heels and clapping his hands. And then what about his not writing to us for years and years? The lack of punctual correspondence is a failing common to 90% of mankind. But that doesn't mean they're broken up over our marriage. And yet he immediately accepted your invitation to give a lecture at our summer drama festival. Does all this add up to a man who's forgotten, a hurt? But we saw him in New York once or, or twice. All right, then. He was delighted to be rid of me. He was glad to have you take me away. And it really wasn't much of an achievement on your part at all. Oh, oh, I, I wouldn't go so far as to say that. How far would you go to say what? He does look rather unhappy, now that you've brought it up. I might have been mistaken. I don't impress men very much. Oh, no, darling. You do. And he looks very unhappy. The more I look at the photograph, the more miserable... Uh, as a matter of fact, his face is absolutely unbearable. You'll have to bear it. His train is due in an hour. Oh, wait, honey. <laughs> No. You really believe he feels that way? After all these years? We'll know very soon, won't we? How do you mean that? I wish I knew. I don't see him. The train just stopped. Give him a chance. Maybe he isn't coming. Would you like to believe that's true? Well, after all, maybe it was an imposition to ask him to lecture. Maybe the lecture isn't the real reason he accepted the invitation. There he is, Robert. Where? Over there. That handsome man in the dark coat. He doesn't see us. Well, maybe he doesn't recognize us. That's quite impossible. Or, or he doesn't want to recognize us. Or perhaps he expected me to come down here and meet him by myself. Well, test him. See if he gets back on the train. Lisa! Lisa! And Robert, my old friends, my good friends, my wonderful friends. It was awfully good of you to accept our invitation. I've been waiting for one for years. And Lisa, lovely Lisa, oh, how often I've thought of you. How often, Eric? Why, so many times. Many more times than an old friend of the family should think of the wife only. That's very sweet, Eric. Isn't it, Robert? Good old Eric. <laughs> yes, sir. Isn't it, Robert? It always is. <laughs> fine, fine. It's just fine. You haven't changed. For a moment, I thought, there's witty Robert talking like any stuffy fellow. But when you needle me, when you pop my ego, then I know I'm back. I'm home again. Right? Oh, oh yes. yes. Oh, Lisa, that was a magnificent dinner. You haven't eaten this much in years. Yes, years. <laughs> The words, the very words I was about to say. But then you always knew what I was about to say. That was our problem. Which I solved. All the memories, all the discomforts and pleasures, they come back now. Oh, you'll be out of here in the morning and Wilton University will have the same obscure position in your memory it's had for the past 20 years. Say, not so fast. You sound like you're trying to get rid of me. Besides, I don't want to forget. You don't? Or you didn't? Both. College was a great deal of fun. It's like a fond childhood memory. We weren't exactly playing hopscotch at that time, you know. Mm -hmm. I better get these dishes into the sink or we'll be late. No, we'll do it, dear. You, you, uh, you get made up. Or we'll just put them all on this tray. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, you both seem quite happy, Robert. Oh, yes, quite happy. Yes, yes, we are. That's because you both live exactly the kind of life you want. Oh, that's because we made the kind of life we wanted. The quiet of scholarship. Yet the chance to try new things. That's what university life is. Do you miss it, Eric? Oh, no, no. This was never my kind of world. You're a born teacher, Robert. 
You have the willingness to let others mold themselves in their own image. I want them to mold themselves in mine. But the temptation to play God is awfully strong sometimes. Yes, but you'd never succumb. No, the ego needs a boost on occasion. I look at the years passing, at the success of men like yourself, and then I consider my limited activity. But you have love. You have a wife who loves you. There's satisfaction here for you. Was satisfaction. Oh, you and Lisa aren't... Uh... Aren't oh, no, 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 not that. She does love me. I'm positive of that, completely. Oh. But she's approaching middle age, Eric. Well, you'd only have cause to worry if, after this length of time, she wasn't approaching Well, oh, it her. isn't her love for me, she doubts. It's my love for her. Not another woman? No, no, of course not. You see, she's worried about whether or not she's still attractive to me. That 40-year-old anxiety? Exactly. We all have it to a degree, all of us... Who are married, that is. But Lisa is beautiful. Truly beautiful. Well, you can't explain away a woman's fear about that. It has nothing to do with logic. Is she afraid of losing you? But not if her self-confidence had a pickup. Well, it isn't quite as simple as taking a vitamin pill for a physiological deficiency. Well, it's a time in life when they rely on memory and remembrance of things past. Here, I'll carry the tray. Quite true. No, no, I'll carry it. Sometimes they think a man in their past is still in love with them. It's happened often. Especially if it's a man who became famous, who, who is desired by many women. French literature has recorded such events for centuries. The way Lisa... The way Lisa thinks you're in love with her. Uh, I beg your pardon? Well, of course, it's absurd. It is absurd, isn't it? Uh, to my knowledge, it isn't quite accurate. Let me jump you for a moment. You're sure? Oh, no need to be concerned. No need at all. Not at all. Well, of course. We're both old friends. And getting older by the minute. We understand each other. Uh, perfectly. Uh, I haven't lifted a tray since hazing days, remember? Oh, yes. And we understand Lisa from different viewpoints... But we understand her needs. Oh, yes. Then, you wouldn't mind sometime during your visit here to say, oh, imply, that you still have perhaps too intense a memory of your youthful love for her. Oh, no, 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 it's nothing. It's cheap pottery dishes. What happened? Robert? Robert, are you all right? Uh, fine, dear. Everything is fine. I'll be down in a minute. You must admit it's rather an unusual request. Oh, yes, indeed. But then you always were an unusual man. Well, not always. It, it's a development of recent years, the direct result of being married to Lisa. It must have been an easier way to keep from washing them. <laughs> well, I always smash dishes before I give a lecture. Uh, it's a habit. I thought he'd broken himself of it. <laughs> Just put away the perishables. We'll pick up the pieces later. Yes, right. Eric? Yes, Lisa? Do you realize this is our first date in 21 years? You are listening to Kathy and Elliot Lewis on stage. Tonight's play, And a Fond Farewell. Later this evening, on most of these same stations, CBS Radio's long-standing theater of great love stories, Romance, returns to the air. Listen this evening for Latin Affair, a story of Latin America diplomacy, the higher diplomacy of romance. Yes, beginning tonight at the star's address, listen again for CBS Radio's Romance. <laughs> How do you think they liked it? Just fine. Several people congratulated me just for having known you. You looked as if you were suffering from an acute attack of stage fright. Well, I was. Being a character in a play poses no problem for me. But playing yourself is frightening. 
How did you know that? A direct quote from yourself as a college student. <laughs> it's funny how easy it is to forget. So many things. Uh, uh, care for a drink, Eric? Something cold. Uh, you, Lisa? Nothing, thank you. Isn't that odd for me to feel that way? Stage fright when you're being yourself. Well, it's a common failing, Eric. Mankind's greatest problem is that he is intimate with fantasy, but a stranger to reality. Is that the professor talking or the man? The husband. Your drink, Eric? Lisa? <laughs> Don't sound so pained. You've loved every minute of married life. Of course I have. Eric, do you think you would feel the way Robert does if, uh, if you'd been married to me for 20 years? Oh, that, my dear, is like asking a turtle if it enjoys being a bird. I can tell you what it's been like not being married to you for 20 years. Uh, Eric, uh, will you excuse me for 10 minutes or so? What's wrong, dear? Uh, some very important papers. What important papers? This is the weekend. Oh, well, little ones, dear. Nothing important. You mean the important papers aren't important? <laughs> very good, dear. Yes, fine. Uh, help yourself to the bar. If you need anything, just call. Robert seems to be getting more erratic. Oh, not really. He was always erratic. I mean, most people thought he was Gibraltar or an unreasonable facsimile. Now that you mention it, he always has seemed a bit erratic. For two people who consider themselves fair conversationalists, we're beginning to sound like cliché experts. <laughs> Your point. Well, I didn't mean it as a contest. It just seems to be an uncommon strain for such two old friends. You weren't very friendly the last time we had a conversation alone. Well, should I have? I just asked you to marry me, and what was your response? That you were going to be married to Robert the following week. You didn't quite ask me if I wanted to marry you, Eric. What you actually said was, have you ever considered marriage, Lisa? Well, you knew what I meant. Oh, yes. But did you? Well, I was young. So was Robert. So was I. Well... Yes? Nothing. All right. No, something. I admit that was the only regret of my youth, that I was too young to appreciate you. Oh? Too young to know so many lonely years would pass, so many empty years without real companionship without the undying love and the lasting tenderness of marriage, without those things you offered me. I offered you no such thing, Eric. I know. I know, Lisa. And that was my error, not realizing I could have engendered such a feeling if only I'd known my true needs. Nice return. Go ahead. Make light of it. You can. You're happy. You're not lonely. Eric, come here. All right. Sit. Beside me. Here? No, no, here. Beside me. Here? There. Now, look into my eyes, Eric. They're beautiful, Lisa. Eric, sweet Eric. You're still the biggest liar I ever met. Oh, I don't think that's very nice. What's behind all this? You're a postgraduate bachelor... You never stop moving long enough to know if you're lonely. Maybe you are, but you don't know it, and that's your lie. Did Robert put you up to this? Now, that's not fair, Lisa. Forget something, dear? Oh, uh, no, I don't think so. Then, uh, did you finish your work? No, well, not quite. Oh, I, I must be looking for something. It's probably in the den. Well, how foolish of me, of course. Everything's in the den. <laughs> he was worried about you. Why was he worried about me, Eric? Well, as a friend... Uh, as a friend, he asked me to help. This is embarrassing. But he wanted me to help you regain your confidence. Do you think I've lost it? Hardly. Uh, but his theory was based on the assumption that your discussion of me indicated uh, an idea that I was... Still in love with you. And you were to encourage that notion to build up my confidence? Oh, it was unnecessary. I must tell him his concern over you was completely unnecessary. Oh, but you mustn't tell him, Eric. I mustn't? Don't you see? It isn't my ego that needs the memory of a, a youthful love. It is his. 
But you were the one. It was you who spoke of me in those terms. He said. True. He said it. Let me explain something to you about middle-aged couples, Eric. It might come in handy in your career. Ouch. I earned the right to that one. Yes, you certainly did. You see, Eric, women in our world can admit to their vanity. It, it permits them to play at being younger than they really are. Oh, if it becomes too flagrant, remarks are passed. But, but, but the right to do it is accepted. But men must always be men, with a capital M. They can never show their crying need to play young as they get older, to, to make believe. Are you looking at my gray temples? Don't you think you're immune? Do you have a lesser problem? You can still play youthfulness on the stage, and thousands of women idolize you. Yes, and they all go home to their husbands after the matinee, and I'm left alone again. Oh, fiddlesticks. You couldn't love one woman if your life depended on it. That's why you've worked so hard to get the idolatry of many. Maybe I'm just a college boy at heart. Maybe you are. But Robert loves only me. And he wonders if he still has the charm and strength and, and appeal for me that he once had. That's possible, too. And one of the greatest assurances he can have is the knowledge that he won me from you. You really think so? Well, if not, then why would he have put you up to this? Only one reason. To find out if you still loved me. You. You, famous Eric Sandler. The Eric who is sought after by so many people. And if you did then Robert would still be king in his home and secure in my love for him. Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize... That's why, Eric, that's why I ask you to convince him of what started out as his pretense, to convince him it is a reality. Will you? I think that's about enough work uh, for one evening. So do I, dear. Uh, I envy you, Robert... Really? Why, Eric? For the wife you have. <laughs> a man with all your money and fame, surely envy isn't quite the word. I said I envy you, without qualification, without exception. You mean you still wish you'd married Lisa? Robert. Yes, I do. Uh, you sound as if you mean it. I do mean it. I, I, I mean, really mean it. You're losing your wits, Robert. I don't make a habit of telling men I wish I'd married their wives. Well, uh, since, since you mean it, uh, that throws an entirely new light on this matter. It's about time. And I don't think I like it either. I think you deceived me. Now, Eric, Robert, uh, that's enough. Deceived uh... you? You dare talk about deception? <laughs> that's wonderful. Just wonderful. All right, that's enough. Let's not discuss it. Let's not talk about it anymore. Yes, we've talked enough. I haven't talked enough. You haven't... And you, Lisa... It's all been a charade to you, too. Eric, have you no conscience? Stop this instant. No conscience? What do you mean? I'm going to bed. What did she mean? What were you two talking about? Exactly what you told me to talk to her Stop. about. Uh, Lisa, darling, listen. It, it, it was for your own good. I mean... It, you don't it have to apologize if you don't want to, Robert. You stay out of this. But you don't have to. Because she wanted me to convince you of the same thing you wanted me to convince her of. Robert, darling, you, you, you understand. It was because I, I love you so, and because I, because I was afraid of your worry and er Oh, Eric, you're a monster. I am a monster. After you both used me to serve your own needs, you didn't care how I actually felt. What? What? You didn't bother to find out if I had forgotten Lisa completely or was still in love with her, did you? Well, I love her. I always loved her. I always will love her, see? Can you get that through your heads? You've won, Robert. You won from the start when you took Lisa away from me. And I'm going to a hotel. I, I never realized. Neither did I. Oh, I should go after him. In the morning. But we've lost a friend. Gained a friend. Oh, you mean now that he has it off his chest? Darling. No, you're right. I... Darling. Hmm? Your kisses were never more sweet. Neither were yours. Yes, indeed. It's late, darling. Oh, isn't it? Mm. Robert. Yes, sweetheart. He'll get over it, won't he? Eric, oh, sure. 
He was terribly disturbed. Wasn't he? He used to get worked up like that when we were in school. Like an explosion. Acting was good for him. Sure, it gave him a chance to let off a lot of energy. Well, it's probably what made him such an excellent actor. He used to lose himself in it entirely. You would have thought they were the same people, Eric, and the role he was playing. Uh, he used to do that just at parties, pretend to be something. Incredible. Even had me fooled sometimes. Had me fooled often. Do you think... What he just said was real? From his heart. I wonder. Really? No, 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 no. He, he meant it. Really? Um, now I wonder. He's fooled us before. When it made some difference in our lives. Doesn't it anymore? Turn out the light, darling. Let's go upstairs. Yes, sweetheart. And a fond farewell, starring Kathy and Elliot Lewis on stage. In a moment, Mr. and Mrs. Lewis will tell you about next week's play. With the arrival of warm weather, people tend to forget their troubles, and other people's troubles, too. We go off for the pleasures of the beach, the forests, and the countryside. By all means, let's get the most that life has to give. But let's keep the need of the Red Cross, the continuing need for blood, somewhere in our minds, at least once this summer. Give a pint of blood through your local chapter. Don't forget, disaster waits on no season. Give blood during the summer, too. And now, once again, Kathy and Elliot Lewis. Arthur Ross, Dramatic Conversation, and a Fond Farewell. We'll do some more of his plays during this series. Byron Kane finally got a chance to play a decent part tonight, and was Eric. People who live in the same town or went to the same school or who are in the same business have jokes that they alone understand. We in show business are no exception. For example, go ahead, dear. Next week, what? Ladies and gentlemen, next week, East Lynn. Only we're not joking about it. East Lynn is a fine old play, and we asked Richard Chandley to dust it off a little and bring it down to size. Fred Steiner, who composes the beautiful musical scores you hear each week, has done the same thing with some melodramatic themes your parents and grandparents used. So that we can say to you, next week, East Lynn. Until then, thank you for listening, and good night. Good night. Music for tonight's story was composed and conducted by Fred Steiner. The Kathy and Elliot theme is by Ray Noble, and the program is transcribed and directed by Mr. Lewis. Gil Warren speaking. America now rides to the tune of 25 million auto radios and listens most to the CBS Radio Network.